Welcome everyone! The last update of Sunbreak is finally here, and with it a new monster, Primordial Malsino. I've always been a big fan of Malsino, so I'm very pleased to see that we got a variant of him. Overall I really enjoy the fight. It looks flashy, feels good and is a lot of fun. A really great ending to the game. Let's take a look at what new stuff the monster brings us. Primordial Malsino's armor comes with one new skill, Blood Awakening. After you heal 50 health with either Blood Right or Blood Blight, you get an element and raw buff that lasts 30 seconds. If you heal an additional 100 HP or 150 HP in total, the buff gets upgraded to a stronger version. After the buff runs out, you can reactivate it by healing another 50 health then upgrade it once again by healing a total of 150 HP. Healing, when your health bar is full, does count towards the activation of the buff, which is pretty good, because that means you don't need to run health drain or get hit to proc the buff. As I said earlier, only healing from blood right or blood blight counts towards the activation of the skill, so it's only good in fights where you can easily break parts and then heal with blood right, or in anomaly fights where the monster's attacks can give you blood blight. There are some endgame monsters, like the Risen Elder trio, where the heads only break when they are close to dying and their attacks don't give blood blight. Fortunately for us, the armor itself is super efficient, with a lot of slots, resulting in us being able to fit one or two levels of the skill for free, while still being able to get the same skills as we did last update. Unfortunately though, the pieces with the skill on it overlap with the Heaven Sent pieces. This means you cannot run Heaven Sent 3 and Blood Awakening in the same set. The Primordial Malseno Lance is really really good. It has slightly less raw and element than the Raging Wyvern Plus, the old Meta Dragon Lance. But the improved sharpness and slots easily make up for that. I mean look at the slots, it has 444. When using the weapon you have one unique property, you heal more from Blood Right or Blood Blight. This synergizes really well with the new armor skill, since you can stack the buff faster. I took the time between title update 5 and 6 to port my guide from a google document to an actual website. As usual, it contains all the new builds as well as the old ones in written form. There's guides about food skills, dog setups and switch skills as well as links to other useful resources. There have been some changes to the Palamut guide, so definitely check it out. With all that said, I think we are ready to take a look at the new sets now. Raw sets did not change a lot. We still mainly use the Teostra lands for general raw matchups and have the Flaming Espinous lands for slightly fire weak monsters. There are some alternative weapons. Instead of the Teostra lands, you can also use the Lucent Norga Kuga lands with Rampage slot upgrade. It's 5 base raw behind the Teo lands but has poison and a 4 2 slot. The status damage of them is pretty much comparable, since Lucent's poison is very low and Tiosta's blast is very high. And since we're pretty much maxed out on damage skills, the slots aren't that useful, unless you want to add more comfort skills like guard up or more guard. In heaven sent sets, we can use the Seething Basel lands as an alternative to Tiosta's lands, because we can reliably use Max Might as a source for affinity. This allows us to deal with the negative affinity on the Basel lands and use the higher base row of it. The matchup chart for raw weapons hasn't really changed since last update. Primordial Malsino is slightly weak to fire with an elemental hits on value of 15 on the head. This makes him a cactus matchup. Last week I made a poll asking you guys what you prefer to manage your sharpness. And a lot of you, including me, really like Heaven Sent. Therefore there's still gonna be two versions of every set. One with Master's Touch and one with Heaven Sent as the primary sharpness management skill. The Master's Touch sets are able to fit two levels of Blood Awakening by using the arms and chest, while still having all the other core skills from last update. As you can see, I increased the charm requirement a bit, because one, people had a lot of time to do melding since the new melding technique got introduced, and two, it's the final update and some people just want something to grind for. This charm allows us to fit the final level of Mail of Hellfire. If you don't have anything comparable, I would just 
just drop some mail of Hellfire and get more build up boost augments, since you want to prioritize maxing out the build up boost before mail of Hellfire. Heaven Sent sets can't make use of Blood Awakening since the pieces with the skill on it overlap. Therefore, the sets pretty much stay the same. One optimization we can do is using Max Might over Crit Eye, since we get infinite stamina from Heaven Sent. I was considering using Max Might last update already, but I wasn't sure how good the uptime is gonna be. But after playing a whole update with the skill, I can say that it is indeed not that bad. Mostly thanks to Intrepid Heart, that allows you to get hit without losing Heaven Sent. If you don't feel comfortable enough to use Max Might, I recommend you to just stick to the old sets. The new sets only gain a 4 slot that we can use to either run Basal Lands or for comfort skills like more Guard, Guard Up or Blood Awakening. We want the Raw from Mail of Hellfire, so ideally on all of these sets you stay on Red Scroll. One more thing to note is that the Flaming Aspinus Lands already has 15% affinity. Therefore, it can reach 100% affinity without the use of Bloodlust. And since we already have Blood Riot because of Blood Awakening, this allows us to use peak performance without the drain from Bloodlust in interfering with our uptime. Cool! Before we look at the elemental sets, I just wanna quickly go over some things because I see a lot of people asking this. So first of all, purple sharpness is OP. Going from white to purple is around a 5% draw and 8% element increase. Most endgame lances only need 2 to 3 levels of handicraft to reach a comfortable amount of purple sharpness. I really don't think there's any 3 levels worth of skills that can increase your damage by that much. So please bring your elemental lances to purple sharpness. The risen Shagaro chest pretty much gives it for free. Second is the whole DC vs Mail of Hellfire debate. Both skills are used to increase your element. Mail of Hellfire is 3 skill points and gives you 20% of your base element, while DC on the other hand scales off of your elemental resistances. And to increase your elemental resistances you usually want to run 3 levels of Furious. So together with the 3 levels of DC this needs an investment of 6 skill points, which is 3 more than just running Mail of Hellfire. Fully augmented elemental lances have around 110 to 20 ish elements. By adding the three skills into the calculation, one can find that you need around 190 early rest that you can convert to beat out Mail of Hellfire. And reaching that much early rest turns out to be pretty hard in practice. Lance is a weapon that already has a very high skill tax. We want offensive guard. Guard, and even crit element has higher priority. Other weapons don't need as many skills, or they can't really make use of crit element. So to make DC sets work on lands, you need insanely good charms and augments. And even then it's probably just better to start adding attack boost instead of getting more element. One more problem with dragon conversion is that you cannot use skill plus to get augments, since skill plus always guarantees a minus 7 LRS, which is really bad if you try to get as much element res as possible. And Last, it's about combos. Elemental Lance requires a very specific playstyle. I recently made a combo video that covers the differences between raw and elemental playstyles. If you're unsure about what you're supposed to do, go check it out. Alright, with those things covered, let's look at the new builds. For Dragon, we use the new Malsino Lance, which already has natural purple. Therefore, Fire and Dragon don't need additional handy and can use a similar template. Except that the Fire build uses a build up boost augment because we are using the Flaming Espinous Lance with Hidden Poison. Water, Thunder and Ice all need some handicraft to reach purple. Therefore, they use a different template with the Risen Shagaru chest. This chest is actually pretty good because it makes the set have 100% affinity all the time. When Bloodlust isn't cured, we are at 90% affinity. But because Bloodlust isn't Cured, our health drains, activating the two strife that gives us 10% affinity. And when bloodlust is cured, we get 20% from the buff. Pretty neat, right? All these sets have the same skills as last update, but got level 2 blood awakening for free by using two primordial pieces. For element sets, the percentage element buff from Mail of Hellfire is stronger than the flat draw, which is why we want to stay on the blue scroll. Against Sponsor with elemental hits on value of 25 or higher, you can use Alan Bane if you find it easy to target those weak spots. Otherwise, stick to anti-species, or if you're too lazy to swap Growth Jewel. 
The heaven sent builds haven't really changed a lot. Once again, it's just a change from Crit Eye to Max Might. It allows us to get more element exploit. But if you got a better use for the 4 slot, go ahead and change it. The new armor pieces didn't cause any changes in the Dereliction sets. Therefore, they are the same as the ones from last update. The only element that really changed is Dragon, because of the new weapon that allowed us to include more skills. If you have a really good Dereliction charm, you can replace the legs with either Risen Kaiser for Fire and Dragon, or Velkana for Ice, Water and Thunder. And here's the final matchup chart including both elemental and raw sets. Cool, that was already everything for today. I hope you enjoy this last update in the same way I do. I still like playing this game and I'll probably make some more educational videos in the near future. See ya, bye.